Hey everyone, Mark Gurman here. I'm excited to announce that there could be solid state buttons on the iPhone 15. Are you sure about that? Ming Chi Quo, what what do you know? Do you know something? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. I, I might not, but uh <laughs> I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. Okay. Well uh Apple's also working on a new display that's gonna be Are they though? <laughs> Are they really? Do you really know that? Do you have something to say or don't you, Ming Chi Kuo? I, I don't know. You know, it might it just it might not happen. It might not. It might be canceled. Okay, I see what you're saying. So Apple has canceled the new Pro Display XDR update. But no, it, it could be later though. That, that might uh, come out later. Maybe we don't know. Really, it, it might happen. It might not. Are you gonna keep doing this all the time? Seriously, <laughs> this is what I do all the time. I will always do, or I might not do this. I might stop at any okay. moment. Uh, so USB C is coming to the next iPhone. Or is it? Stop! <laughs> All right, these little contradiction stories are starting to get on my nerves, to be honest with you. So not only did just a few hours after I posted my last video about Ross Young telling us that Apple had scrapped their plans for the Pro Display XDR with ProMotion, Ming Chi Kuo comes forward and says, no, it still might happen in 2024, 2025. It's just been pushed out a little bit. And similarly, Ming Chi Kuo also, in collaboration with Jeff Pu, a supply chain analyst, have both said that Apple is now scrapping the idea of solid state buttons on the iPhone 15. Some people are a little bit bummed by this because they were excited for, I don't know, some kind of shake up with the buttons. But personally, I see this as good news because on our podcasts and live streams and stuff, we were all constantly trying to figure out, like, why? Why does the iPhone need solid state buttons? How is that supposed to help anything? What use cases, what features does that enable? And if anything, doesn't that make hard resetting the iPhone when there's a software crash a lot harder? Because now when there's a software operating system bug, you're you're not going to be able to use the buttons to hard reset. So I also saw a lot of people that were annoyed by the ringer switch concept being replaced with some kind of mappable button. And the idea that Apple might just keep the buttons the same this year, I, I think is fine. Like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And frankly, we were all kind of struggling to figure out good reasons to switch the buttons to solid state. And if they end up not doing that at all, then that means, okay, the buttons will probably just continue to work exactly as they have on our previous iPhones. I don't see that many people complaining about physical buttons. However, there has definitely been a lot of CAD file leaks and everything that have alluded to the ringer switch being replaced with this smaller mappable button. So given that Quo and Jeff Poo are both agreeing that the solid state buttons are just too expensive or too complicated and they can't get the engineering of them right at scale, that makes me wonder maybe there's still a mappable button. It's just a physical one, which Apple's not against. 11 Pro battery cases had camera buttons and maybe that can act as a ringer switch if you want it to be, or it can change to a different focus mode or launch the camera app or turn on the flashlight or whatever. It just won't necessarily be solid state. But this whole report as a whole is kind of making me question a lot of the tech community news these days, to be honest with you guys. And for the record, I don't really take pleasure in this ping ponging effect of every time a news story drops, two days go by, and then another news story drops contradicting the previous news story, as in now someone gets to claim they were right because either the new iPhone will have solid state buttons or not or the Pro Display XDR will get updated or not and even a few weeks before that we had iOS 17 isn't coming to the iPhone 10 or just kidding yes it actually is so this honestly starts to feel like okay maybe we're getting conflicting sources but the likelihood of news stories being faked and leaks being fabricated starts to rise in my view and I'm not trying to capitalize on that necessarily which is making it fairly hard to create tech content these days because obviously I kind of built a lot of this channel on the concept of let's cover the news, let's cover the rumors, what's potentially being leaked right now, what is coming to the next iPhone, and maybe it's Apple trying to send out false information so that all of us are more doubtful of the news stories we read, but when the news is as dry as it is right now and there's not too many announcements to go off of and there's not that much exciting information, it's reasonable in my head that some of these sites might just start throwing out one idea and then a couple days later throwing out the other that way they kind of cover themselves and can say they were right one way or the other no matter what happens yeah we reported on that possible outcome we we really thought it was possible the iphone 15 wouldn't have solid state buttons but if it ends up having it they could say oh yeah we reported on that that was rumored to happen but when they're contradicting themselves this much it really makes it hard to believe anything these days which maybe that's better for apple maybe that's what they were hoping for from
from the beginning, but to be completely transparent and honest with you guys right now, this kind of back and forth on like uh, useless semantics and stuff is part of the reason I'm so much more passionate about the EV community right now because there's constantly new EV news and changes to prices and new vehicles coming out, legacy automakers, startups and existing companies. And I just think that we're so early in the adoption curve for electric vehicles that it gives us lots of educational experiences and hypothetical scenarios of what the future is going to look like. Whereas this tech channel here where we're talking about watches and phones and laptops and tablets is constantly struggling to find meaningful news or meaningful updates to get people excited. And that's why you may see me be a bit less active or a bit less excited for the future of tech over here. And that's why I'm more interested in talking about how older tech has aged or what kind of prices you can find on older iPhones and how they're holding up. I'm visiting my family out of state right now and it's kind of fun because I get to see all of my old iPhones that they picked up from me over the years. So like my sister has my old 12 mini, my dad has my old 11 Pro Max, my mom has my 13 Pro Max, and they're all just blissfully enjoying their tech even though some of it's older than others. It doesn't matter, it all just works for them. And I think this is the sign of like a maturing tech field where incremental upgrades slowly become the norm and the difference between iPhone generations is about as noticeable as the difference between Toyota Camry generations. You know, there's not a lot of fluctuation. And is it possible that because of that boredom and because of that insignificance that's resulting in news stories just being fabricated for, eh, well, we can make, you know, five to ten news articles talking about solid state buttons and then three to four more news articles after that saying there actually won't be solid state buttons and the end result is it doesn't matter if it was true or not. As long as we get clicks, we did our job. So I suppose that's why my brain has been flocking more towards electric vehicle content lately. So if you want to see me be more passionate about innovative and next generation tech and reviewing it and talking about what I think should be prioritized for the future as we adopt more and more of these things. That's where I guess you'll see a lot more of my heart, whereas the news over here just feels like kind of a side hustle now. <laughs> it feels like kind of a hobby until there's actual news. But at this rate, when we're seeing news stories contradict each other this often left and right, makes me wonder if the Apple reality headset is even happening and what can we truly believe these days? I don't know. But if there's certain types of content you want to see more of, on this channel, please feel free to comment it down below because I'm still kind of trying to figure out what we want to do with the future of this channel when the news is so contradictory and there's only so much old tech we can highlight. All that good stuff, let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I'll see you all in the next one.